Nemale, who is a farmer and a community reporter as well. He will be discussing with us on ways of improving Nigeria's agricultural business to combat food security in the country in the wake of food crises that have rocked the nation. You're very much welcome, Mr. Yunusa. Thank you very much. Good morning. It's a pleasure to have you here. Thank you. Very quickly, there is a huge problem in the country. Absolutely. Food insecurity. Yeah. It's not news that people are hungry, mm. and that has led to nationwide protests. One of the major causes of the nationwide protests. As a farmer, yeah. what is your reaction to this? Well, I am not surprised because severally we have been appealing to uh, the government to wake up to our responsibility. One of the mistakes the president did when he came was for him to declare state of emergency instead of insecurity he said state food. of emergency so the insecurity he met all we wanted was declare a state of uh, emergency on insecurity so that the insecurity of the rural community can be taken care of but he didn't do that again he went ahead again to declare subsidy gone of course we have all seen the result you see it's just like a man coming to a water Oh, because you claim you know how to swim. You didn't even ask people what's the depth, where is stone, where is stick and all of that. You just jumped into it. Of course you crash. And this is where we find ourselves. Now, I was expecting him to, even once getting into the office, he would have sat down. Now, try to ask questions. What is happening? What is going wrong? How can we solve all of this? Bring good heads together that can... Uh, change the narratives. Not people with effective English, please. We have had enough of people with all manners of PhD, they come and speak English, no action. We don't need that. We need people who are down to earth. Now, let me just, I, I ask some people, now there is trouble in the land. <clears throat> I expected the president to tell all his officials. I expected all the National Assembly members to go back to their villages and talk to the people. You will see how many people will come back alive. We have the National Assembly that is supposed to check the executive. Are they doing their work? The answer so, is no. So, so you're calling for a reawakening of people Absolutely. in rural communities. No, by... no, they are awakening. The hunger alone has awakened them. They are waiting. They are on the edge. Okay. Sir, a farmer, let me give you myself as an example. I planted 5,000 heaps of yam and then 3 hectares of cassava. Cattle went in and destroyed them. I went to report. They told me there's nothing they can do. My sister borrowed 350,000 naira from one of these microfinance banks to plant cassava. They destroyed it. Cattle? Yes. I told myself I'm not going back again. My sister is now crying seriously. I mean, uh, where, where, where did this happen? In Kogi State. As I speak with you today in the community, in a, uh, Omala local government, a lot of communities, they, since the last three years, they've not visited their communities. And... Every day we keep hearing all of this. Is it because they are in Abuja? They think they are safe? Now you can see what is coming. People are hungry and you keep them inside. You say they shouldn't come out. It will get to a point they say, ah, instead of me to die here, let me go out too. Well, we have seen a, a lot of insecurity situations <coughs> in the country that yes. have sort of sort of led up to what we now know as food insecurity yes. in the nation. Mm -hmm. Firstly, is the Boko Haram crisis yes. that ravaged the northeastern parts of the country. Okay. Farmers couldn't go to their farms. Yes. There was a lot of hunger in that region. Go correct. Secondly, is the farmer header clashes mm -hmm. that have you know been ongoing for a very long time, even yes. though mediations have been made. But I still know that. They are, you know, pockets of happenings of the farmer header clashes in parts of the country. Mm. And thirdly is the banditry in the northwestern part of the country, uh, talking about Katsina, Zamfara and the rest, Correct. which has also stopped people from going to their Absolutely. farms. All of these things, all of these are pointers to one thing, insecurity. insecurity. And that is what I expected the president to do. I declared in a state of emergency on insecurity. Tell the soldiers... Give them a march, marching order. The Air Force, give them marching order. Um, Navy, give them marching order. Police, mobile police, give everybody marching order. And then whatever they need, provide for them. And see whether there will be no result. Now, we will now know that this governor or this president is really, really ready to tackle this uh, insecurity head on. Rather, he did the otherwise. Now, this is where we find ourselves. Today, because of that subsidy gone, 
In Abuja, you buy for well 900 naira. In the rural community, it's even more expensive. More expensive. The farmers are going through hell. No, nothing called infrastructure. Don't forget I'm a community reporter. Yes. Schools are not functional. Road, dead. In fact, they, get, they keep getting bad all the, uh, uh, every year. Yes. I am into cashew. A bag of cashew before now, 80 kg, from the farm to the warehouse was about 300 naira. But today it's 3,000 3, naira. If I have 30 bags, multiply it. How much would they buy it? Everything, all the value chain addition in uh, the cashew from pre-production to production to post-production, post -production. all has increased, tremendously increased. And that has, that has affected your own profit Absolutely. as a farmer as you well. You can't even make profit. Where a laborer takes 1,000 before, he takes 3,000. And he tells you one, if he's coming to work on your farm, yes. you're going to transport him. You're going to feed him. You pay him 3,000 and then transport him back home again. Uh, uh. Now, now, now uh, there's a report by the federal government yes. uh, that the FG is targeting an increase in staple crops to about 135 million metric tons for smallholder farmers. How? For smallholder farmers, hold on. Mm -hmm. uh, and it's doing this by a strategic plan to boost food security uh, by the end of 2024. So who are the, who are the uh, uh, strategically working well, together? Well, well, well you, you, the you, are, you are a farmer yes. and, and I, I believe you're also a smallholder farmer because Correct. of you know, what you do. Yes. Uh, you also said that you've not been called by the family or anybody. Yeah. Or any, there, is there an association that you We have an to? association which was, sir, let me tell you, since 2020 COVID-19 till date, no farmer will tell you that he's been able to make one naira. We're all in debt. But is this achievable? The 135 million metric tons? It's not tons. achievable until we take care of in insecurity, until we take, off, take care of some key fundamentals like fuel. Because everybody, okay, I buy my own motor saw, for instance, chainsaw. I want to prune. This is the time farmers maintain their farm. But yes. nobody is doing that because the fuel is, uh, is so high. Uh, the labor is so high. Now, all I expected Mr. President to do, you see, I don't like criticizing people, but I want to give you a solution. At the Nanja Delta, I was at um, Okerewa in um, yes. LMA. Oh. Now, I expected the president to call all those, they call them illegal refiner or whatever. Call, call them to a round table. Call all other agency, CAC, FIRS, and all of them, the regulators. Let them sit down on the round table and say, gentlemen, from today you are no longer illegal, but legal. CAC, register them. Produce me fuel right while we're trying to fix our generator now our refineries is, yeah. our refineries sorry uh, while we're trying to fix our refineries these guys that are always um um refining they will produce for the country's consumption they will employ they will pay tax come on common sense man. but but, but well, well you are looking at it from the point of view of an a, an analyst who already has the picture you know, framed out from, I'm, from I'm with them in the rural yes, communities. You are with them in the rural communities. Yes. However, we would also not dispute the fact that the claims of cabals in the oil and gas sector in Nigeria mm. is quite a strong one that still stands. So how, how do we overcome then, this? Then, then Co considering already, considering yes. that, the, that the common man does not have the power, both financially and otherwise, to fight this cabal. So you don't need the common man to fight the cabal for you. The president, the reason he is there as the president is to protect and provide. That is why he took the oath. Yes. They, in nothing to protect. Go and check our constitution from the beginning to the end. You can summarize it just into two. Uh, provide, uh, provision and, and security. Right? Yes. Now, if you are the president, you cannot be bold enough to do that for the people. Then you are not worth it. So why do we elect you? Well, with all due respect, some of us did not, but some did. Those who believed in you are the ones who are protesting today. Go and check it. They are the ones who are protesting. Now, to even crown the whole thing, when he said he was going to address the people, all of us um, at the rural community were, okay, maybe he's going to address some of this issue between you and I. Did he talk about what is happening? No. Well, well, a lot of people share sentiments that he didn't, while others were so okay with his did, See, that alone provoked a lot of people. The president and his team need to sit down as fast as possible to think, you don't keep people in a hung, uh, in in a terrible mess like this and expect them not to react. They, they will react, and that is why I am of the opinion that the president should not just 
He should release things. He should get the right people to do the right thing. You see, appointment, appointment, appointment. We are in a, we are in a country where um, uh, we keep spending on recurrent issues. No, sir. I expected when he came, look at the amount of money he borrowed. When he came, he was given palliative. The Nigeria said we will not want palliatives. Go to the village. People are hungry. They are sick. Sent out no. bags of rice to states. Where the are country. they who are collecting it? You see, the thing is that the president, all you have done is to give states, because he is the one giving. Everything starts and ends on his table. Give a uh, uh, marching order to the, uh, the, to state, the state government. To the governors. Gentlemen, here is money. This money I'm giving to you, go and fix the rural hospitals and fix the rural road. Because if the road is even motorable, the charges won't be this high. The roads are bad. Now, this man who carries, of course, you can't use your vehicle, his motorcycle. The man carries you on his motorcycle. He finish, he drops it, he goes to mechanic. Mechanic collects it again. Can you see how the whole thing is revolving? So nobody is making money anywhere. In, in, in the past administration of yes. President Muhammad Dubai, <coughs> uh, one of the uh, strong measures that he took to ensure that there was abundance of food in the country was you know closing our borders and banning the importation of mm -hmm. food items yeah. you know from from outside of nigeria mm -hmm. and he actively supported farmers in the country mm -hmm. i don't I, I, I don't know if i'm right not but, everybody yes, goes, but to an, extent, to an did, extent there was a lot of support coming yeah. in from the federal government then and you know it, it sort of helped in boosting the agricultural years in the country local farmers were supported uh, uh policies were made to favor them however in the current regime uh, the president bola ahmed tinubu has said that uh the, his government is suspending uh food import duties Sir, we don't even need food to import food yet. And, and, and some, to some, some analysts are, yes. are wary of this because they warn that this might make Nigeria a, a nation dependent on food importation. Are we not already? Sir, even if they import, not that the price will come down. Our Naira is so weak. I just came back from Cote d'Ivoire. I exchanged 40,000 Naira for 16,000 Sefa. I also went to Ghana. I exchanged 200 CDs for 30,000 Naira. I whipped. So even if you import, definitely anybody who is importing will also want to make money. So who told you that the money is going to come down? No, sir. When we have arable land everywhere. Well, well, well if import duties are, are suspended yes. and food items are imported in yes. the, into the country, don't you think the government also has a right to determine the prices of food commodities in the price, country? Do you have price marketing board? No, sir. Again, how do you regulate when you are not producing? Before when we were growing, we used to have price regulatory board. Yes. When you buy milk five naira in Lagos, you will buy it five naira in Kaduna. Across board. Across board. When you buy yam two naira in Sokoto, so you buy it in, in, in Onicha. But the reverse is the case. He came, he told us he can do it. And he said nobody should pity him. Not me talking, I ain't talking more. And that is why when he said, Emilio call. Okay. So, sir, we should drop sentiments. Enough of... The problem is bad policies that in, is affecting in your, people. In your opinion as yes. a farmer... You have been in the system for yes. years. And you say that the president's or the federal government's policies mm. are not favorable to farmers. Absolutely. What is it or what are the things that the federal government should be doing to support farmers also to be able to increase food or crop yields in the country? Well, apart from the statement that they made of mm. you know the 135 million metric tons by the end of 2024, what so actual, what, what, what actual long-term measures mm. and modalities can the federal government take? First of all, the question is that why is our refineries not working? Why? Because everything we do, whether the farmer, the buyer, the seller, is around the fuel. Why? Big question. Why? I keep asking. One of the guys who overhauled Kaduna Refinery, I called him. I said, come, what is happening? You did the refinery. Now every day they the refinery, I said, my brother, may I sit down? Ask them to start the refinery today if it will not start. So the question is, why are these refineries not working? You buy fuel 900. From here to Kogi State, my state, from Abuja here, cost me 15,000 against 1,500 Naira. Does that make sense? 
As a reporter, I find it even difficult to travel uh, into the rural community because it's even more expensive going into the rural community. So first of all, fuel. We must make sure. Well, thank God that this uh, thing that fell, uh, the policy is hitting basketballs on every one of us. Mr. President, please let him go back to that fuel issue. I don't know why he finds it, he's finding it difficult to say no. In the first place, they said subsidy, subsidy, subsidy. It was all scam. There was never subsidy. It was just lack of people who don't, don't know how to manage this, uh, the issue. I ask you, why is our refineries not working? Others that produces crude oil also have crude uh, refineries. So why is our own not working? Four. Look at what now they're also frustrating uh, the private one, don't they? This has been a very, very big uh, issue in the news in the last so, couple of weeks. I don't have an answer. He has an answer because he is the commander in chief. The first thing he gets in the morning is security briefing. What he gets before he goes to bed is security briefing. So he should be able to tell us Nigerians, gentlemen, this is the reason why your refinery can't work. And then we now know that this is the reason it cannot work. Everybody will just, you know, forget about it. If not, Everything they, whatever policies, anything they have planned, won't work. Well, in, in moving to mitigate the hunger mm. that has, you know, rocked the nation, yes. uh, the wife of the president, Senator Remy Tinubu, uh, you know, urged Nigerians to go back to the farm. I told you my and, experience. And, now and, I want and, to go and, back. Now. And she, she, she did this by, you know setting up a little farm in a state house where she even brought out yields and and uh, from and crops from her farm vegetables i i must add to show that this is possible even for her as as the first lady have we said it's impossible we're only saying make sure that the uh, farm environment farming environment are safe it is their duty who says we cannot do it in my own house here in Abuja, I, I, I have vegetables now. But how, how, much, uh, uh, how much of that will I consume? We're talking about feeding the larger uh, audience. Before now, we're feeding ourselves. And, and uh, there's also the issue of population rise. We're but, currently at 230 million, we don't even know. statistically speaking. We, we statistics from, from who, or who told you? The last time we had pro uh, census was 2006. Even that one, again, was not acceptable. Well, these are reports coming in from the NBS. Yeah, because uh, everybody will just write in. Come to the village and see population. In your own community, your own rural community, how many will I be? No, I'm asking you. Well, you I, I, I wouldn't be able to ah, know that because so there's a lot of people. will just sit down here in Abuja and cook one story and then drop it. I challenge any one of them. The man who is writing, tell him, tell him to tell you what's the population of his rural community. I am a community reporter. I, I go deep into where people finds it difficult to go and what i see i knew we have a problem massive problem on our hands well let's let's still go back to the farmer herder clashes and yes. touch on that uh, farmers mm -hmm. people like you who grow crops yes you are in the agricultural industry absolutely herders are also in the agricultural sure. industry so this is not an issue of you know brazen insecurity where you know you'd say one side is unarmed mm. the other is armed how can there be synergy between farmers of crops and farmers of livestock to work together? Sir, there's what we call ranching. In the rural community. Well, well, well that, failed. that failed. Why did it fail? Lack of political will. In the rural community, you see people having their goats, uh, sheep and coal. The moment farming season starts, every farmer will tie his goat into the uh, it's a small band they do so that they don't go and destroy uh, the, the crops. It's done in my own village. You don't see any, you don't see, you don't dare see any goat moving around. Because definitely it's what you planted that, that they will be coming for. So everybody will tie his goat. And if per venture your goat goes out to destroy anybody's farm, they make you pay. Pay heavily so that next time you will not allow it out. So this is their own method of even protecting that. Not to talk about those whose own um, profession is to move around with header. So if it's a business, get your land and pack them one place. Get them food instead of going to people's farm. So the population is rising. Where they were passing before, they are all buildings today. Yes. So there should be a solution. We should not just sit there and make it look as if there is no solution to our matter. 
And it is only a country that thinks that makes progress. What we do here, we sit down and pray, expecting one magic from heaven, and then we'll be depending on the country that thinks. There have been statements in the past by uh, the Metiala Cattle <coughs> Breeders Association yes. concerning the cattle ranches that were, you know, proposed to be established in certain parts of the country. Yes. Uh, and uh, these statements were, you know, surrounding the fact that there they are already cattle routes that they have been using for, for, for years, that they want to be allowed to continue using this cattle route. But how possible it, is it, that? It's, it's quite controversial, but what is your take on this? Every state is a federating unit, isn't it? Yes. In the country. Now, if me, I'm in state A, I say I don't want such... Why would you force me to accept it? So why don't you stay in your own, uh, uh, your own environment and do the needful? You have a large, vast of land in the north. You can start your ranching in any part of it. But why must it be that one? Now, I, you are coming to my state. I said, my people are complaining. Your coming here is destroying my people's crops. And I said, stop. You say, no. Is that, does that make sense? So even at that, where uh, where is the ranking of Nigeria in terms of uh, cattle rearing below the line? Yet it's quite problematic for the country. It's because we don't have a proactive president that will say enough is enough. We're always talking about cabal. Cabal are not are not from heaven. No. They are humans. Well, well, I, I, I still believe that the federal government, as well as uh, the president, Bola Metinubu, would somehow or sometime in the future create room for mediations between farmers and, and the cattle yeah, well, because it's still a huge problem. Uh, well, let's hope so. Um, don't forget, the uh, president, the first four years, he has 1,460 days in office. The first four years, 1,460 days. He has spent over a year now. Not okay. Let's look at the issue of um, f uh, food exportation mm -hmm. now. Uh, we have touched on importation and mm -hmm. we've established that uh, with massive importation, we might become too dependent on it and it's not good for um, you know farmers in the country. Yeah, but talking about exportation, there are a lot of things that we produce as a country that is needed in the outside world. That's correct. How well is the input exportation industry? doing in nigeria and how can it be bettered yeah, well um, we're not really doing well let me give you an example cashew yes like i said cashew has different values are you aware cashew has 42 products that's interesting are you aware that, that cashew i'm going to lend them okay. to you are you also aware that cashew is food and cash crop are you aware that cashew has three benefits now we are only exporting the raw nut not processing it now we have cashew has the apple we have cashew has the uh, three crop i mean um, um, uh, uh, um, the, the nuts, nuts yes and then we have the three all of these three have their benefits the nut when you crack the shell the kernel inside is used for milk bread chin chin shortcake uh, um, uh, other pastries and other things Cooking oil, kuli kuli, just from that. Now, the kernel, sorry, the, the shell the outside. Of the, of the knot. That is the most expensive in it. Why? Good. That uh, knot you see, once you process it, you have cashew nut shell liquid. And this cashew nut shell liquid, when further processed or distilled, you have the jet oil, you have your shoe polish, you have your antirust, you have the silugulum they use for building, you have the, you have, uh, the ship use it, uses it a lot, you have your brake fluid, you have your hydraulic, and so on and so forth. Goggle it there and see. Well, it, it, it seems to be quite a very... Because people uh, don't want to know. And when we tell them, they say, what is it? It's a multi-purpose crop. That's what I'm telling you. No crop, the, the, no the, crop has what why, it has. Why aren't we utilizing this no, for the purpose we, of all these things that you mentioned? Our problem in this country is that because you are in a seat, somebody is telling you the truth, you don't want to listen. Not, don't, not, ju not that you don't not only want to listen, you don't also want to know. Why must it be him? I have sent proposal to CBN, I have sent this, I have done all manners of... See, 
we don't need let me give you the price range the raw nut per kg raw nut per kg is about 1000 the last uh, market was 1200 but the processed canal per kg not uh, semi processed yes. per kg is 10500 can and, you see and, the and the shells no 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 just remove the canal yes the one they, they the, chew. That, that is being chewed and right? eaten yes now look at the disparity Look at the value addition if we are to process them here. I, I've forgotten even or I would have come with some for you to see them. All right? Now, imagine we are processing all of this. Now, the tree itself, cashew tree, a lot of people don't know that it is used to mitigate climate change and even attract carbon credit. This is the training that took me to Ghana, Ghana, Cote d'Ivoire. Sponsored by the EU, uh, OCPS, and their course. Because, see, we... <laughs> well, well let, me, let, me, let me just hold you there. Uh, let's talk about deforestation from a different angle now. Uh, in, in parts of the country, especially mm -hmm. in the northern parts of the yes. country, we've seen in the past couple of years a massive deforestations that have been going on mm. owing to uh, pe people felling trees. Yes for firewood purposes yes. and for medicine and other purposes. And in, in situations like this, you don't find them replanting. Now, how, can you, you see, we, how can we curb this Again, issue? you see, um, towards the end of last year, Vice President took two, promised two million seedlings of cashew to not, uh, not west. Whether that has been delivered, I don't know. What, is it, what was it meant for? Just to plant it so that they can uh, mitigate climate change. Now, cashew takes, once you plant it, Cashew takes between four or five years and becomes a big tree. Yes. And it can grow easily anywhere. And that is why the world is, world's attention is on cashew. On cashew. And if we can take care of that, you, do, you, do you know what it is to give out uh, two million seeds? <coughs> we are always quick to you know, issue out statement and no action backing it. Now, to do all of this is very simple. Can the Minister of Agriculture or Minister of Environment partner with primary and secondary school? Tell each student, this is your tree as you are coming into this school plant. Or give them a vast land, uh, primary A, primary B, C, D, and all of that, secondary and all of that. Tree, tree planting sessions or, or tree planting uh, used to be a major part I of secondary school. I did that when I was in secondary in, school. In, in the past. Yes. Now, why are people falling down? Uh, trees again the failure of government do you know how much kerosene is now per, per, per liter kerosene it's quite expensive kerosene that's supposed to be the cheapest that you can just get it anyhow but it's very expensive so the alternative i have is to go and fall down the trees to use us as, to as, use as so that i can eat so you can see all of these problems are government all centers on government. Everything starts and ends on government. But, but we can't we can't just point fingers at the government alone without okay. also without also holding some people responsible. So how many people if, have if been you are felling trees? Yes. If you are felling trees yes. and the tree has seeds, yes. I, I don't think it it will be too much of a hassle mm. for you to pick up seeds and plants as opposed to felling if, huge trees. Uh, some farmers, for instance, on my farm, I have six thousand cashew stands. Six thousand. 6,000 cashew stands. This is different, separate from uh, palm tree, mango, orange, and coke. Just cashew stands. Just cashew stand. On 15,000, I mean, uh, 15, 15.572 hectare, 15 hectare of land. Now, sir, if I can do this, government, Minister of Agriculture, yes. please ask them, where is their demonstration farm? I challenge you, please. If there's one. If there's one. Any state that has it, that means they try. So if they that are custodian of agriculture does not have, uh, first of all, beat yourself before you beat another person. So all of this effective English we, we have been speaking will not take us anywhere. Let us move into action. Simple. If you break the law, let yes, in fact one major reason, one major problem we have in Nigeria is the lack of law and order. Yesterday I was I was I was getting I was going to the uh, ten. I don't know who the person is, but police were driving. The red lights stopped everybody, and they just passed. 
so a police van police were the one uh, ferrying the guy uh, i think his uh, uh, pilot and co police that is supposed to protect the law oh it, it was a convoy whether yeah. convoy no convoy uh, does it, are they uh, are they do they are they not human being is the law different their own law different from our own law so that's where we have a short so fall of law and order in the, the country short of law and order the see from abidjan to yamasoko it is written not more than 100 k uh, kilometers kilometers well. that's what we work out 375 kilometers nobody i didn't see anybody pass that if you did my front now my front you did do you understand these are people in fact from the airport you see this 60 kilometer you see all their radar they will pick you immediately but why are we finding it difficult to obey law even those in government that are supposed to live by example every other citizen will stand they will come and drive everybody away so that they can pass does that make sense well if we are chiding the government for you know policies that are not favorable to the masses mm. if we are chiding the government for lack of discipline in terms of following law and order yeah. and the, the laws that they have you know put in place what is also the place of the private sector farmers in ensuring that food security is guaranteed in the country and uh, the, the federal government has rolled out bags of rice to states mm. which some states have received others are yet to receive but what is the position of private farmers in helping out in the situation Sir, the, there's nothing little or nothing the private farmer can do because everything boils down to the same thing that is affecting everybody you have farmed come and take them to the market now you find out that what you're going to spend is even cut cost of production uh, is even more than what you're going to get back they're doing their best don't forget every farmer uh, household farmer it's also a private citizen who is contributing his own. Yes. So you don't need to be very big. If you, I have one hectare, you have one hectare, and all of us bring it together. That's what we've been doing. The government, I mean, the people have been, uh, you know, the one driving the economy. And that is why our economy is falling by the day, because they don't, they no longer have that strength. The youth are no longer interested in going to the farm. Because they saw their grandfather, they saw their father, they were not encouraged. Nobody encouraged them, and they are getting weak. But that is, and that, 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 that and is where, where the place of mechanized farming comes into place. Where you since can I was a, a child, way. since I was a child, they've been talking about mechanized farming, and that is why I ask you: Tell me where federal government or state government has one demonstration farm to show us that this is how to go about mechanized farming. Our research institute today are under lock and key. If I don't know anyone, I know the one at Ochaja. I have it on camera. They can't research anything. Every cashew you see is the farmer on their own. They don't even know milk we plant. They don't know the standard practice. They're just planting. Tell me, where are the extension um, officers that we used to have? And these are part of the trainings that we have gotten. But now to come and also impact it on the farmers, I can't travel. I came back on Sunday. I can't travel. How can I spend 15,000 Naira to a less than 300 kilometer community? And then when I'm coming back here, I spend the same thing. Ah, how much? Who is giving me money? No. Oh. Well, as a farmer, where I, will, I, I just want you to, to, to answer this. Where has the cocoa farms... Where has mm. the uh, 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 palm, palm tree plantations, where, have, we, where mm. have they all gone to? This used to be major uh, uh, food and cash crops that, you know, were driving as a part of the drivers of the economy of yeah. the country in, 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 you know, the past decades. Mm -hmm. What has happened to these, uh, these plantations? Well, uh, for instance, cashew, cocoa, cola, coffee in my own area. No, uh, uh, excluding cashew. The remaining three have been cut down because... I haven't harvested them they don't know who to they don't have any off taker yes so they are cutting them down for another product but in the west of course they have uh, a very fo formidable uh, association they even have a cooperative cocoa cooperative where they take th take them to so you can imagine somebody who is in organ with a bad road wants to sell his co uh, is, uh, 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 crop no off taker in Nanyuba, no off taker in Lokoja. he needs to go to maybe Akure do you know how much it's going to cost him there? Cost of fuel. So Which still boils them. down to ah. refineries. Ah. Fuel subsidy brother. removal. It's, it's a, it's a chain, chain, chain of reaction. events. That, uh, yeah. It's a chain reaction.
for every sector, every unit of the farm production, for every stage, fuel plays a heavy. major role. How much is the diesel? We process cashew raw not, yes, right, in our own way through our uh, um, association, association of cashew farmers, aggregators, and processors of Nigeria. Now, for all of this value chain in agriculture, 70% of the people that work are women and youth. 70%. In fact, in some cases, it's close to uh, 80. From uh, farm preparation to harvest and then to warehouse and sorting, they are all women and youth. And that is why uh, I wish uh, there's what we call women in agriculture. They should be, in fact, we should clap for them. Women are the one holding this country. How much can a man do now? Well, for instance, let's let's picture just the uh, Plateau State uh, capital or Plateau State as a whole. Mm -hmm. uh, it's one of the major food producing states in the country that mm -hmm. supplies Irish fruits, potato, vegetables okay, go ahead. and other items to different parts of mm -hmm. the country. And mm -hmm. from reports that we've seen uh, and pictures and videos that you'd find on the Internet, it's majorly the women yeah. that drive the agricultural yes. you know, economy there. Sure. So my question is, how can we support these women? Uh, in in actual clear terms, supporting them to be able to yield more, supporting them to be able to set up bigger farms, and supporting them to be able to farm in a way that is sustainable as well. The women are ready to do whatever it takes to put food on their own table and sell the rest. But I'm sure you are aware of the insecurity there. Yes. You are aware of people now in their own homeland are displaced. Absolutely. So it still boils down to insecurity. Um, if you get to uh, Rion, by the left, there's a primary school there. That's where people are staying now. They are afraid of even going to the farm. Due to insecurity. Pockets of attacks in the Any, uh, there's something, I, I met a woman, in fact, I started crying when I saw her. Because she only said, let me even go and see what I can get to bring and add up to what uh, Nema has given them. Only for her to be attacked. Quite a sad She incident. does not have money to go to the hospital. No support anywhere. Yes. Come on. Well, well, well in closing, just a few words. What, 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 what is the uh, position of the federal government in all of this? In just a few words. As I don't know their position. Uh, I'm sure what the, the position they have is what we are seeing now. Oh, all right. Thank you very much, Mr. Mm. Yunusa Gabriel, for uh, sharing your thoughts with us on the program this morning. Thank you very much.